Yep, stacking microchips will allow you to bypass security checks. Building a million dollar lab to unlock cryptocurrency keys and smart meters that can sense when your TV or computer turns on are being deployed in Rhode Island. Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. Now, in order to understand why stacking microchips might be interesting, you have to know about a thing called talk to, time of check versus time of use. Now, in the physical space, this concept is very easy to understand. It's the gun is always loaded. You always check the device before you use it. You always check it before you handle it, because if you don't, bad things can happen. Now, in the case of memory chips, the bad thing that can happen is code might be executed from some other memory chip that you're not expecting. Some processors can boot from external memory and just run their code from there. Other processors load all the code from external memory into their own RAM and they execute the code there. So if the processor boots up, it loads all that code into its own internal memory and does some integrity check to verify the authenticity of the code, all is well. The opportunity to do something interesting comes in when that code is actually executed in place in the external memory chip. In that case, it would be how can we substitute the code that's in that memory while it's running, while the processor's already executing these commands, to run our commands, our completely benign, well-intentioned commands. We're not going to do anything nefarious. Well, one way that one key found was to actually solder another chip, another one of these memory chips, directly on top of the one that's in the board and say replicate the memory that's in there except for a small change. Maybe you change a string that's being printed. That's what they did. The key to the attack working is once the device boots up, once it's done its integrity check on its initial main memory chip, you flip a switch, a literal switch. That switch is the chip select line that's enabling one chip or the other. Now, because there's no integrity checking on the communication between these memory chips, if you're able to swap in another one immediately between commands, the processor's not going to know any different. And that's exactly what they do. As you can see in this video, by waiting for the processor to boot up and then flipping the switch, they're able to basically flip over to their own entire code base that the processor will run. Now, in the demo, all they do is change a message that's printed to a web page. But that's not what we do. What we would do is take any encryption keys or something that might have been encoded or encrypted when it was stored in the external memory, and then as it's loaded into RAM in the processor, say it's decrypted. And so now the contents are plain text, but you can't get to it because the chip's locked down and it's in RAM. Well, if we're able to execute our own code from our memory chip, the first thing we could do is dump all the contents of RAM out of the serial port. Now, this is in contrast to our next story, which is buying millions of dollars of equipment to try to hack cryptocurrency keys. This attack is only $3. I mean, it's the cost of a memory chip and a switch. So if you have a processor that's executing its code from an external memory chip, this attack is fantastic. It's very low cost. Now, some of the more creative amongst you in the audience might be thinking, why not just emulate one of these memory chips? Why stack one on top of the other? It's actually an incredibly hard challenge to emulate these little external memory chips because the timing is so fast and so critical that you can't just use a computer to respond as if you were the memory chip. And the reason is, as the external memory chip, you're not in control of when you can respond. You're being fed a clock signal. That clock signal is your timing and you're getting commands. And as you get those commands, the next clock signal comes in and you have to respond immediately. Otherwise, that request is going to fail. So while it seems like it would be very simple with a modern computer to respond, it's actually incredibly hard to maintain that timing and respond back. So that's what's so cool about this attack is that they figured out a very low cost way to perform this exploit. It says here you're supposed to subscribe and like this video. Now, this Wired article that I ran across was pretty interesting. Anytime someone's going to try to hack something that's really locked down, like cryptocurrency storage keys or anything like that, it's always cool to see who's doing it and how are they doing it. Now, generally speaking, I think cryptocurrency is a complete waste of time and it's added no value at all in any way to the market. Well, I take that back. It has built an entire ransomware business and a bunch of VC firms that have funded startups to respond to the ransomware business and then 
large funds that deposit a ton of money into Bitcoin to drive that to ensure that people have a way to pay when their stuff is held under ransom. So in that sense, it's created a great new market for the economy. But I digress. There's a lot of different groups out there. Joe Grand had a fantastic video of trying to break into a hardware crypto key and showing all the various methods. This company that's being written about in Wired is called Unciphered, and obviously they're trying to build a business around this, so they're not telling you anything about how they figured out how to attack this key. Now, the key in question is an Iron Key S200. They chose that one because there's a guy who apparently has around $235 million in Bitcoin stuck on one of these things and can't remember his passphrase. The irony for these guys is that once they actually figured it out, like apparently now they have a way, systematically, they can crack these keys. The guy that has all the crypto locked up apparently already contracted with someone else and he's, his hands are tied. He can't switch it over to these other guys and he doesn't seem to have any interest in doing it. This is a good cautionary tale for anyone with an engineering mind which is if you build it, they won't necessarily come. It doesn't matter if you have the best technology or the best solution to a problem. The first thing these guys should have done is talk to this guy and said, if we figure it out, will you work for us? And because that engineering mind is so afraid to take the leap and say, I'm going to be able to do it, contract with me, they didn't. And now that they figured it out, they basically are sitting there with a, a key to a gold mine and no one to walk them over to the gold mine. This is why you hire salespeople. Salespeople are more than willing to promise the world and hope the engineers deliver. Hey, if you like this, I also have a Patreon account where you can go and support and check out a bunch of other cool material. Ah, uh, Rhode Island. I envy you. You're going to get the latest and greatest Landis and Gear smart meters. With Ravello, utilities can deliver experiences that help consumers achieve a new level of understanding about their energy usage and their home. These Ravello line of meters have some technology incorporated in them by a company called Sense, as in sensing all of the things that are drawing from your power line. Ravello gives consumers a clear picture of their energy usage, including when and how each appliance uses energy and how this impacts their overall bill. The technology that they have, what they perfected, is to be able to look at a very high frequency the fluctuations that are going on on your power line and determine what devices are turning on and off. We use high resolution energy monitoring and machine learning algorithms to identify devices in the home and provide detailed insight on how they are being used. Now obviously, all of your data will be safe. It's gonna be stored in a very secure way. It's gonna be transmitted in a very encrypted way. And you can trust us, we're the power company. Now because these devices are so new, they're not on eBay yet, which is a, <laughs> brings a little tear to my eye. I know they'll get there eventually. Um, you know, and if you happen to come across one that's laying on the side of the road, but really laying on the side of the road, not ripped off the side of somebody's building or something else that we're not allowed to do. Now, if you like this, you want to check out some further reading, I got links down in the description. You can follow me on various social media platforms and like and subscribe to hear more stuff about reverse engineering. I'll see you soon.